It is October 4th, 2024, and I flew home to New Zealand on October 4th, give or take. I know I arrived in New Zealand on, on, on October 5th. I get confused with the, the date-time difference when you're flying from Canada to New Zealand. Suffice to say, it was 2004. It was 20 years ago, um, which means that the last couple of weeks, which has coincided with the eclipse season, eclipse window, was also the same two weeks where... My fiance in 2004 broke up with me after the first episode of psychosis triggered by Kundalini. Um, so he broke up with me, which then triggered a second experience of psychosis, which meant that I ended up in the psych ward a second time. And the second time couldn't blame the mind expanding drugs. There was no LSD involved or anything. There was no drugs at all. It was simply grief and the way that my system attempted to avoid feeling the really painful grief that sent me up into fantasy land psychosis etc and so that second time landing in the psych ward and also like I'd just been dumped by my fiance you know like it was and it felt as if he dumped me because I'd been in a psych ward right so that second time was way more emotionally painful and I was there for nine days the first time I was only there for I think two nights like three days um, so the last two weeks has been the 20 year anniversary of that experience and I'm back in Canada I came back in March so it's the first time I've been on this land here in Canada I was in Lionsgate psych ward um, in Vancouver I'm now living in uh, Squamish and I had a sense that it might be a challenging t period because what I've noticed about this awakening experience is once one is on the awakening continuum, um, that often when there's anniversaries of big events, if there's any unprocessed emotional residue left over from those events, it's like mm, the anniversary time provides an opportunity for any unprocessed emotional residue. It's like it's closer to the surface of consciousness so that it can be fully dissolved and resolved. So I kind of knew that going in and oh my God, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it was, it's been a wild ride over the last two weeks. I have been, as I would call it, deep in the underworld. Um, and it's also been really joyous. It's also been really joyous and I wanted to share this with you because there's a lot of misunderstanding sometimes about what it means to awaken or what it means to be enlightened and people are like, like why? Why do you want that? Why do you actually want that thing? Um, and people have this idea that once you wake up, once you're enlightened, then everything is easy and everything is good and everything is fun and it's amazing and oh my God, life. yeah, nah. And, they're not, and I'm not enlightened that I'm aware of, um, not fully awake either, pretty sure. Um, I'm on the continuum, there's no doubt about that, right? It's it's unfolding, there is an unfolding occurring, there's less and less identification with the story of me and all of that. Um, yeah, and so it's really important to understand that awakeness is, is nothing, it's just a shift in identity, it's just a shift in identification. It doesn't mean that there's not experiencing of challenging things right and so the last two weeks yep been in the underworld massively so much grief has been coming through so much grief and you know the difference though is that there's far less avoidance or aversion and I have a greater context or view teachings to support the process so there's far less suffering way less suffering and I also have practices that I know loosen the attachment, loosen any aversion that and decrease the suffering. So over this two week period, A, I've wholeheartedly moved toward the shitty ass feelings that have been coming up, the grief, the horror, the, all the things. I've moved toward it. I have done my practices. Um, I did an amazing yin class with Nick Robson that's available online through the Practice Bali. Um, and I feel so held when I'm in a class with Nick. He's an amazing yogi. He's a good friend of mine. And so that sense of being held and that sense of safety really allowed me to go into some deep stuff. And I surfaced a vikalpa, a belief, and was able to fully dissolve that. And I'm pretty damn sure that that particular belief, A, it, it wasn't personal, it's transpersonal. And my sense is that that belief was embedded, like my system embedded it, installed it, took it on 
board when I was in the psych ward. And so it's flavoured, that particular belief has flavoured how I perceive reality ever since. And, and now it's gone. Ah, now it's dissolved. Um, yeah, so the last two weeks in the underworld, has, I've applied my practices. And one of the major practices that I've been working with right now, right, so the joy of being, the joy of being is a tantric phrase that speaks to the inherent nature of reality. And when there's that awakening that unfolds and we begin to immerse more and more into that which is, into awareness, into essence, nature, into the joy of being, then our experience of reality becomes less and less determined by circumstances and more and more determined by where we're orientated to, where we're moving from. So I've been working with what would joy do right now? What would joy do right now? You know, like I've been physically sick over the last week or so, you know, like I've been sleeping a lot, been unable to leave my bed, all this emotional stuff coming up, grief, and then challenging life circumstances. And just when another thing hits and then another thing hits and then my car doesn't start and the battery's flat and this is going on and that's going on, what would joy do right now? And the first time I started asking myself that, I immediately felt intense grief immediately I'm like oh shit if I want to experience the joy of being I need to go through the grief and if I don't if I don't move toward that grief then it's like joy is not accessible because it's on the other side of grief and my desire to orientate to the joy feel the joy be the joy was so strong I'm like all right grief let's go it still took a bit still took going you know going into a class with Nick Robson for example it still took doing Uchada practice Uchada is like, I'm not, I did that one for a thousand days and right, actually six, six years, <laughs> 2015, 2021. And I, it's not my daily practice anymore. But when there's shit coming up, man, I go to Uchada because Uchada is a practice, um, which was the daily practice of tantric initiates from like 10th to 12th century or so, according to Christopher Tompkins, who I learned it from. Uchada will dig up the shit and then it will pierce it through the chanting of the mantra and through the visualization, the way the mind is scaffolded in the practice. And if you're unsure about the importance of scaffolding the mind through practice, go listen to Josh's latest podcast on the Emerald, why mindfulness is not enough. <laughs> it's so good, so brilliant, so amazing. Um, yeah, so that's what's been going on in the last couple of weeks has been intense journey through the underworld, through what could have been a whole lot of suffering so much heaviness, so much darkness, so much grief, so much despair and hopelessness and a feeling of like powerlessness. And, you know, it's really challenging to go into a psych ward, to be seen, to feel the weight of social conditioning on what it means to be crazy. The way we perceive people who have mental health challenges or issues. And I, I don't even like that term because it's I don't even think it's accurate. Um, but there is so much heavy social conditioning around it and I feel like I went down into the last vestiges of that and burned through a bunch of stuff so this awakening enlightenment thing does not mean that all of a sudden everything is awesome and amazing and you don't feel all the things nah -uh. what it means is that you develop the willingness the capacity the ability to be with what is and to feel the inherent joy and sweetness of it. Because my God, it is a privilege. It is a fucking privilege to be alive. It is a privilege to have health of any and all kinds. It is a privilege to have a roof over your head, to have food, to not being bombed, to not be hounded to genocide, you know, to, into genus. Like, oh my God, there's just so much privilege that comes with being a human being. And I think that's the inherent joy. Like I just have this profound sense right now that regardless of the circumstances of my life, it is critical as a human being that I orientate to the inherent joy of beingness because that is what is required. That is what is needed. Um, if I can do it and I can embody it and I can live it, then potentially I can inspire other people to do that. And so then we become less enslaved by our conditions. Then there's a recognition of our own power to choose joy in the midst of it. You know, and I think about slavery in the Americas and the ways in which and you know, enslaved people, the humans, these humans would 
find their own liberation through dance and through song, particularly through song, the songs that they would sing when the chains are on them. And it was that sense, you know, and I'm just going by my perception. Um, and I definitely welcome any correction on this. But that, that sense of like, you can enslave our bodies, but you will not enslave our spirits and our souls, you know? And that's what I feel is needed right now. This awakening, this liberation, it's not just personal, it's collective. And when I break through the enslavement of conditions and become liberated into the joy of being regardless, which is the practice I'm working with, then it's easier for someone else to do it and it's easier for someone else to do it and it's easier for someone else to do it. And what happens when, as a culture, as a society, we start to radiate with joy no matter what the conditions? Because I tell you what, when I look out at the world, I was talking to my son last night, my 14-year-old, and I'm like, dude, I get it. The world looks like it's gone fucking crazy. And he goes, yeah, it does, mum. The world has gone crazy. I'm like, yeah, where's the leadership? It doesn't look like there's any fucking leadership out there, but we are the ones. We are the ones. And so that's where my spiritual practice is taking me right now is just like doing it for the all, doing it for the all, doing it for the all. All right, so that's a little bit of a rambling update around all the things. Um, if you want to hang out my community, Shelter, it is a free community on school. Come join, take shelter, take shelter. Um, the purpose of the community is to foster connection and community, of course, amongst spiritual practitioners and to really foster practice. Uh, I teach weekly classes there, so you can join those classes. Um, yeah, otherwise, oh my God, so many blessings for whatever it is that you're going through, whatever you're experiencing. Recognize that underneath it all, underneath it all, underneath it all, regardless of the objections of the mind, there is the joy of beingness. There is the joy of beingness. And may you know that. May you know that. Mm.